The Russian Black Sea Fleet does not have ships with launchers for the Onyx and Siakon missiles. This was stated by spokesman for the Navy of Ukraine, Dmitro Pertenchuk. One of the advantages is that the Black Sea Fleet does not have ships carrying cruise missiles that have universal launchers. These are the Onyx and Siakon missiles. This is actually a positive moment for us. The models here are more outdated, he said. According to Pletenchuk, the location of Novorossiysk Bay itself is not the best from a geographical point of view due to difficult navigation during storms. The closed Bosphorus is also a problem for them, and here there is already a problem, not only in ensuring their activities in the Azov Black Sea region, but in ensuring the activities of the permanent operational group in the Mediterranean where they are based in Tatus, the Navy representative added. Recall the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine has played out largely on land and in the air. It is a bitterly contested, grueling ground war accompanied by brutal Russian aerial attacks on civilian infrastructure and a slow but increasing Ukrainian response. But a less appreciated but vital focus of the war is happening on water too. There, a contest for control of the Black Sea has seen Russia stunningly defeated. Control of the Black Sea's near waters has been contested throughout the centuries and has played a role in the current Russian-Ukraine war. Russia's seizure of the Crimean Peninsula in 2014 allowed it to control the naval port of Sevastopol. What were near waters of Ukraine became de facto near waters for Russia. Controlling these near waters allowed Russia to disrupt Ukraine's trade, especially the export of grain to African far waters, alongside being thwarted in its ability to disrupt Ukrainian exports, Russia has also come under direct naval attack from Ukraine. Since February 2022, using unmanned attack drones, Ukraine has successfully sunk or damaged Russian ships and whittled away at Russia's Black Sea Fleet, sinking about 15 of its pre-war fleet of about 36 warships and damaging many others. Russia has been forced to limit its use of Sevastopol and station its ships in the eastern part of the Black Sea. It cannot effectively function in the near waters it gained through the seizure of Crimea. A protest was held in the so-called Republic of Abkhazia to protest the investment agreement with Russia. The information was spread on telegram channels. Thousands of protesters gathered in front of the parliament. The parliament was planning to consider the investment agreement with Russia on November 15. However, the meeting was postponed due to the protest. Protesters who entered the parliament premises are demanding that the deputies vote against the agreement. It should be noted that according to the investment agreement signed in the Russian capital Moscow, Russian business will receive great privileges in Abkhazia, as well as land and property rights. Russia which demanded the approval of the agreement, has stopped financing the Abkhazian budget. Ukrainian soldiers on the front know the re-election of Donald Trump will change their lives, but most say that they can't afford to lose focus on their more urgent mission, holding back Russian troops. The Associated Press visited a brigade in the eastern Kharkiv region as they loaded drones designed to carry bombs with food, water, handwarmers and other supplies for infantry soldiers engaged in combat a 15-minute flight away. The brigade's drone commander, who goes by the callsign Kit, or, CAT, pilots the tiny unmanned aircraft from a basement room he jokingly calls their Airbnb. Guided by the drone's night vision camera, 
he drops the 10 kilogram packages one by one as close as he can to the position where as many as five infantrymen battle Russian forces. The delivery will hold them for two or three days, and that's about as far as Kit dares look into the future. He knows that Trump's presidency will change something in his life, but as far as he and other Ukrainian soldiers on the front are concerned, trying to figure out how is a game for politicians. For him, all that matters is the distance he measures in the meters that Russian forces advance or retreat in the frontline sector that is his responsibility. But he cannot escape the sense of a gathering storm. Russia is increasingly hitting the Kharkiv region with unstoppable, building leveling glide bombs and swarms of drones and chipping away at territory there. Its troops are advancing in the Donetsk and Zaporizhia regions. And up to 12,000 North Korean troops have been sent to Russia's Kursk border region to help beat back Ukrainian forces there, according to US, South Korean and Ukrainian intelligence assessments. Trump, who has called President Vladimir Putin, pretty smart, for invading Ukraine, has repeatedly criticized American backing of Ukraine. He characterized Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky as the greatest salesman on earth for winning U.S. aid. Zelensky was among the first world leaders to publicly congratulate Trump and said the two discussed how to end Russian aggression against Ukraine when they met in September. Between now and Trump's January 20th inauguration, the Biden administration has said it will send as much aid to Ukraine as possible to help hold back Russian forces and possess a strong hand in any potential peace negotiations. But Russia is pressing just as hard for an advantage in what most believe are crucial weeks to come. Другой принял. для большинства людей это просто уже на характере то есть просто бросить все сбежать ну и смысл дальше завтра они будут дома то есть все равно подпитываешься тем что у тебя есть семья и все остальное и защита мирных граждан и как-то хочется да и поменяться и все и уже немного и отдохнуть от этого но все прекрасно понимают что сейчас нам абсолютно не до этого Потому что если мы уйдем, ну и тогда, тогда все. Тогда уже и возвращаться не будет куда. Конечно, сложнее, опять же, и тоже в БК, и техника, сколько они нам передали. Смены хорошо. Возможно, будет намного больше помощи. Плюс у них там свои планы, как прекратить войну, и все. Единственное, что смущает фраза 24 часа, потому что не хотелось бы ни в коем случае отдавать свою землю. Потому что... Потом это может и продолжиться, и все остальное. То есть вот что-что, а только полноценная победа. Не отдавать никаких территорий, ни в обмен ни на что, ни на какие договоренности, потому что они уже прекрасно доказали, чем выходят потом эти договоренности.